Today on Hammer and Steel Reviews, we are looking at both the spear and shield and the techniques that surround them. We're also going to be looking at different spearheads. Before we get started into that, I want to thank Weapon Masters for supplying these weapons. Without their support, none of these videos would be possible. Neither would this picturesque area for us to film in. The spear is the most pervasive and common weapon found on the battlefield clear into the 17th century. Its simplicity to construct and rudimentary mechanics make it an ideal weapon for most warriors. That is something that many reenactments, movies, and television frankly get wrong. In many cases, even the nobility would stride first into battle with a spear in hand, only resorting to their secondary weapon when their spear would be lost. It's quite terrifying to face a shield wall bristling with sharpened spears. The shield wall also is an interesting feature as it is debated on how often they were used in battle itself. To me, a shield wall makes a lot of sense because of the lack of armor finds that have been found. There have only been five era helmets that we know how they were constructed and four fragments of others. Though this is a low number, it is a bigger number than the amount of body armor that has been found. In contrast, there have been over 17,000 Viking sword finds. To me, this says that body armor was not that prevalent and Vikings relied on guerrilla warfare and their skills with large shields instead of armor. These weapons would have also been used as effective hunting weapons. These lugs or wings were helpful in stopping a boar or deer from sliding up, goring the hunter. That is one of the reasons why the blades of these spearheads are also kind of larger. They wanted to inflict a large amount of damage while still ensuring some level of protection to the hunter. Other weapons were much more tailored to combat. These smaller and more maneuverable spears were used for more combat. The shield wall affords less room to move and the smaller spear is easier to keep from getting tangled during the chaos of battle. These smaller spears could also be used as projectile weapons if needed. There are accounts of warriors carrying multiple spears for this purpose exactly. The advantage of a spear is distance, ease of manufacturing, and easy to train to be used. Let's see what a spear will do to a flesh analog. This three inch ballistics gel will act as our analog. We have a couple layers of canvas to simulate clothing and then some mail. This mail is butted and their mail would have been riveted but this is simply to see how the spear performs in more strenuous situations.
If you'd like to pick up one of these spearheads, follow the link below and use the promo code HANDSVIEWER2020 and receive 10% off your first full order. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. That will ensure that you keep up to date with all of our newest videos. Again, thank you for watching, and as always, may all your days be filled with history.